Allow me, Mr. President, uh, before I conclude, to respond to Her Excellency Ambassador Samara Power remarks uh, with uh, regards to her analysis of the situation in four countries of the region, including my own. So I hope that she's watching this <laughs> on webcast. <laughs> if not, please transmit this, convey the message of Rwanda, please. You know, first of all, I think, and I hope that she won't confuse her name with her assignment. Mrs. Power doesn't have power on Rwanda. In reaction to her remarks, we need, first of all, to caution her in lumping together the approaches of the four countries are there is no one size fits of all solution in responding to the challenges the region is confronted with. While we commend, we commend her remarks as to the positive trajectory achieved by Rwanda in economic and social fields and in Rwanda playing a key role in maintaining peace and security at the international arena, there is a need. There is a need to emphasize here that Rwanda's achievement did not occur, did not occur in a vacuum. Indeed, the success Rwanda encountered stemmed from many factors, including good governance and an enlightened leadership led by His Excellency President Paul Kagame that put together single-handed solutions tailored to the Rwandan situation in the immediate aftermath of the genocide against the Tutsi. Yes, if you were not there, I wouldn't be here today talking to you. You want me to tell you about my story, about why we Rwandans want him? You know, my grandparents were refugees, my parents were refugees, I was born as a refugee. And luckily, he went back home, stopped the genocide, and luckily, I went back home too. And you were, oh, the Security Council in 1994, on a daily basis, having 10, over 10,000 people killed? What have you done? Nothing. 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 We want this man there. He was the only one to take his responsibility and come and stop the genocide. He's our hero. As I was telling to this gentleman over there, so we will never ever ever accepted whoever will try to deny what the Rwandans wants to achieve or what is the choice of Rwanda. Drawing from the bad politics that led to it, in Rwanda it was imperative for the Rwandan people to build on a culture of ongoing dialogue with all citizens of Rwanda as so as to enable them to have a voice, participate and redress any attempt of hampering their well-being and the opportunity to claim their rights when they feel that their leaders are not responsive to their rights. With that approach, pluralism has been deepened, deepened in a consensual democracy whereby citizen-led consultations have yielded tangible results in mending the social fabric and in addressing all issues of concerns. Mr. President, indeed citizens of Rwanda have been afforded with numerous platforms to convey their views and concerns. Indeed, Rwanda understood as a vital element that the only way to consolidate gains was staying connected through a participatory democracy enabling people to have a voice in all matters concerning their well-being. That well-tested system, that well-tested system has prompted the people of Rwanda to opt massively to keep these 
very precious man, the president we have today, namely President Kagame, at the helm of the nation. So if, as she well stated, Mrs. Samantha, that over the past 25 years, Rwanda has made the most progress in the world in terms of human development. Did it carry just from out of blue? No. It's through his leadership. It's through his leadership. So we know what is good for Rwanda and Rwandans. You do not really have uh, to agree with us, but you can respect our choices. There are some, some of the things we might disagree with your country, but there is nothing we can do about it. We leave it to you. What we cannot agree with you, is that you want somehow, yes, to occupy our political space. And this, never ever, none will come and occupy our political space. It belongs to Rwandans and only to Rwandans. If, as you well, your leader well stated that the democracy is there for the people, by the people, then please let the people of Rwanda have their own choice. So, therefore, Mr. President, ensuring peace and stability of the country without taking into account the political, economic, historical factors will be a mere exercise that will lead you now here. We in Rwanda came to the realization that it has to be an ongoing process of education dialogue with the people and cannot be at all means a cut and paste exercise from one country to the other and cannot follow the same pattern as issues are unique to any country. So, Mr. President, in conclusion, let me reiterate my call to the, or for the Security Council to shift from a culture of reaction to one of prevention. Indeed, <laughs> with unfolding events in Burundi, of course, of course and elsewhere, it is inevitable for the Security Council to try to improve its record in fully understanding early warning signs of conflicts and responding through early action if, t if it has to remain relevant. While there has been a huge increase in the level of international preventive diplomacy and diplomatic peacemaking, for the most part by the United Nations and more recently in partnership with regional organizations, these efforts will remain inadequate if they are not followed, by, followed up by concrete actions on the ground. I thank you very much, Mr. President.